welcome to the White Glove Demo for Catan History's Struggle for Rome. In Struggle for Rome, players lead barbarian tribes as they sack and plunder the weak but wealthy cities of the Western Roman Empire. Glover, what have I told you about defacing buildings? Sometimes a horde of bloodthirsty barbarians are mightier than the pen. Besides, your Latin needs work. The first player to 10 victory points wins. Victory points can be earned by conquering cities for a point each, having a single tribe plunder cities from each of the five regions for two points, playing at least three diplomat cards and more than anyone else for two points, revealing culture cards for a point each, or by conquering at least four cities with each of your tribes. To set up, place plunder counters face down on city hexes of the same color. In a three-player game, don't place counters on cities marked with the Roman numeral three. Have each player place a horseman and a wagon in the horseman tribe box in that player's corner and then a warrior and a wagon in the warrior tribe box. Place the grain and ore resource cards in face-up piles. Place the livestock cards face down. Place the development cards face down. The Roman army is currently somewhere in Spain, so place the legionnaire figure in any forest in Hispania. Each player places a horseman and a warrior figure on the dots of their color east of the lines. Either figure can go on either dot. These figures represent the horsemen and warrior tribes in the boxes at the side of the board. Each player gets a round overview card with a quick reminder of the rules, five gold, a grain card, and a random pasture card. It's either cattle or a horse. The player who rolls highest goes first. If that's how you feel, Glover, I suppose you can go first. It's not worth battling to the death over. Turns occur in four phases. We start with the first player rolling for resources. Each time the dice are rolled, mark the number on the wind rows until four different numbers are rolled. When a seven is rolled, the rolling player moves the legionnaire, blocking production in that space, and stealing a card from one player with a neighboring tribe or city. The legionnaire cannot leave the empire, so players are safe in the starting positions. Unlike in the original Settlers of Catan, you don't discard when a 7 is rolled, no matter how large your hand. When a number is rolled, Everyone next to a number that was rolled receives a resource of that type. In this case, an 8 was rolled, so everyone gets an ore card. Starting with the first player, players can trade and build. Resource cards can be traded to other players or exchanged 3 for 1 with the bank. Once per turn, a resource card can be purchased for 3 gold. With the right resources, development cards, supply wagons, and barbarians can be purchased. Glover is buying a new member for each of his tribes. These get added to the tribal boxes on the side of the board. Next, each player takes turns moving horsemen tribes. A tribe can move as far as you want along hex edges or sea routes if you can pay the travel costs. Cost is determined by the arrows you cross. The first arrow is always free. Additional sea arrows cost one gold apiece. Additional land arrows cost one grain or three gold. Glover can move here by sea if he has one gold. The first arrow is free. The second costs one gold. If Glover has no gold, he could also go by land. The first arrow is free. The second and third arrows will each cost three gold or one grain apiece. If Glover has no gold, he'll have to discard two grain cards. 
If you end your move on a crossroads next to a Roman city, even if there is a movement arrow in the way, you may plunder or conquer that city if your horde is large enough. To plunder a city, your horde must have at least as many warriors or horsemen as the city has towers. Glover has two horsemen, so he can plunder this city. Once plundered, flip the plunder marker and follow its instructions. A red area on the token means you lose a member of the attacking tribe. The bottom of the plunder token indicates rewards. In this case, Glover gets a gold for each wagon his horde owns and a development card. The plundering tribe then adds that token to its hoard box. Each tribe can collect up to two plunder tokens of each color. Once all the horse tribes have moved, the warrior tribes move. The rules for movement and plunder are identical for the warrior tribes. After all horsemen and then all warrior tribes have gone, the first player passes clockwise and the turn begins anew. Tribes must continue to plunder Roman cities until they have plunder tokens of at least three different colors. A tribe can then found a kingdom by conquering a Roman city. The requirements for conquering are the same as for plundering. Your tribe must outnumber the defensive towers. The tribe then settles down, placing the tribe's representative figure in the city along with a wagon from the tribe's supply. On subsequent actions, the tribe can only conquer other cities no more than one movement arrow away if the tribe is big enough. Each conquered city must be occupied by a figure and a wagon. Keep in mind that development cards can greatly change play by letting you move the legionnaire, letting you attack stronger cities, or even moving a tribe clear across Europe. As soon as a player has a total of 10 victory points, that last round is played to completion. Once every warrior tribe has finished taking action, if two players are tied, the player with the most gold wins. And that's Catan History's Struggle for Rome. Now that you've inherited the ruins of the Roman Empire, I suppose you can relax and enjoy the games, Clubber.